Hello, Jenny Hall here for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I'm creating with the A2 Surprise Box Card Base Die Set. I'm also using Far Out Friends Stamps and Dies, and I'll add some really fun sentiments with Stellar Sentiments Stamps and Dies. In order to add some really fun stars, I'm using the Twinkle Twinkle stencil and I'm working on Nina 110 pound cardstock available in Honey Bee Store. Let's start out by making two die cuts of the card base, make three bridge section die cuts, and then make four pieces of this, we're gonna call it a banner, but it's this is the bottom banner. And then there's also a top layer that has piercings around the edge. We're going to make four of those as well. These units will be assembled and put together with the pierced piece on top of the other layer. It's a little bit smaller and has those really pretty pierce marks. There's also a die that creates extenders in order to add things that come out of the surprise box. Let's start the project since we're working with white heavyweight cardstock for all of the pieces except for the extenders that are made from acetate. So we're going to add color to the areas that I want to have colored. And I thought that would be really nice and fun to use a galaxy theme, being as the images from Far Out Friends are like an, of an outer space theme. So I'm going to make the outside of the box look like outer space. I'm using a few colors of Distress Oxide inks and a blender brush, and I'm working the colors onto the outside of the box. You'll know that it's the outside because the score marks are, are indented into the paper. And also you can see that the attachment tab is on the left of this piece. Now, once it's flipped over, the attachment tab is on the right and you can see that the score marks were on the other side. Now I'm going to add some blue to the opposite side and you'll see why we're gonna do that because it's going to show through. Now take the Twinkle Twinkle stencil that is a, a part of the new release from Honey Bee Stamps birthday stamps, birthday release, and we're going to add some stars to the outside. You'll notice it's the outside because the tab is on the left, the attachment tab there. So between yellow and gray, there's going to be a variation of colors. If you want your stencil to stay in place and you don't feel that it's very secure, then try some pixie spray. Now I'm going to add a little bit of color to the top area of all three of those bridge those bridge items. Now, if you see that there is an attachment tab on the left and the right, you'll see which side is going to be the front by looking for the score marks. The paper is scored down into the front, but honestly, you could use this in either direction. It would be okay. I'm just adding a very light amount of color because I don't want that area to be white that is going to stand up. Now here is that bottom layer of the banner and I'm using pumice stone distress oxide. It's a very light gray and I'm just adding color around the outside edge. This is the pierced layer. I'm going to stamp some images onto each one of these panels and then we're going to layer this on top of that gray bottom layer. So I'm using some different inks and the sentiments were stamped with a permanent ink, but the images that I want to color with Copic markers are stamped with a Copic friendly ink. Memento is a great ink to use for Copic coloring because it's dye based. And I thought that gray would look a little better than black in order to color in the images. But there is definitely a gray theme with the whole color scheme. 
I've listed all of the marker colors on screen as we go, and I've also put them the caps to where you can see them in, in the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is coloring these panels before I adhere them down to the bottom part of the banner. I wanted this part of the banner to stand out and, and look separate from the bottom layer. And now you can see in contrast, the bottom one is gray and the top one is white. And that's going to give me that little bit of visual dimension. So let's start putting together our surprise box. First thing is that I'm going to use some really, really strong adhesive. This is double-sided tape and it's about one eighth of an inch thick. You could use one quarter inch, I think, and, and be safe. Just try to make sure that the tape does not go past the score line. If it does, then you'll see as I am going to show you shortly that you can roll it back to where it just stays in the one area. Before we put our box together, let's make sure that you burnish all of those score lines and this will be a great opportunity to help it go together better. And you'll see here that by coloring that that blue area that it's going to when the when the flaps open up, you'll see that it it's going to give a little more color. Now, Nina 110 pound is a heavy cardstock, and when it's folded, sometimes it tends to break fiber just a little bit. So I'm using that purple brush to just go over and make sure that it doesn't stand out too much. A Copic marker would work really good for that as well. So now I'm going to remove the adhesive from that left-hand tab and attach it to the right-hand side of the opposite side of the card box. And you'll see that this is how it goes together. Just that simple. Now I'm going to locate where the left-hand side of the box is going to be. And I pointed my finger to where the left side of the box would be. And we're going to attach our bridge section. The bridge is what we're going to attach all of the images to. So what the best way to do is either do it from the left or from the right. Either way works, works good, but we're gonna stay in that one panel section and we're going to attach all three of our bridges. And we're going to butt the front of the next bridge up to the back part of the previous flag, flap. So you can see here that I'm taking off that adhesive I roll it back if needed, and then I'm going to place that next bridge section right into that one area that we're working on and have all three of the bridges left hand tab on the one section that would be the left side of the box. Once those three pieces are in place, then you can use your score uh, you can use a bone folder or like I was cheating here and just using the back handle of my brush, then just score them down and then close the box. And the adhesive is going to be picked up right here on the other side of the box. And that's how I use a shortcut to attach to the opposite bridge area. If you have a stubborn piece like I did, then just pick up the box and manipulate it until you get it in the right place. And then you know you have all your, your bridges attached on the left and the right side of the box. Now it's okay to close the other opposite side of the card. And this is going to completely join the surprise box. As you can see here, we've got all of our bridge sections in place and it moves very nicely. So now I'm going to burnish down those flaps. And this is the part that kind of makes it surprise because when someone opens it up and the flaps fall down, then the images will be seen. But first I'm going to adhere those banners right over that area. And you can see that the scallops 
are made to fit directly into the flap pieces. They nestle in there perfectly. This is why I added that blue on the opposite side of the, of the A2 surprise box because I wanted that blue to be a background instead of it being white on the inside. But the bottom half of the surprise box doesn't show because the bridge is covering it. I hope that makes sense. So now let's stamp a whole bunch of images and I'm going to stick with that same gray ink and I'm going to use the scraps of when I did the die cuts of the surprise box. Normally you would see me use the Misty tool to do my stamping, but because I was using the scrap pieces, it's just as quick for me to grab a block and do that onto a block. So I'm using some fun Copic colors in order to keep the theme very light and whimsical for this outer space surprise box card. And I thought it would be fun to just use my imagination and make the animals or the critters or the aliens, whatever you want to call them, but I thought it would be fun to make them some unexpected colors. But I'm keeping the sun, the moon, the planets, all pretty much what would be expected. But the aliens are, are free to be any color. <laughs> so of course I had to make one pink. My youngest son, Nate, has a birthday coming up in May. And he may just get this surprise box card. <laughs> but his favorite color is pink. He's a six-year-old boy, and I'm not going to discourage his love of pink because I like pink as well, but not as much as Nate. So here is a pink alien, and I'm just using a very simple color combination and doing very easy, simple coloring. I'm not trying to give a outstanding dimensional look to each of the images. I just want to do some simple coloring that has a little bit of contour and blend to it. So two green markers on the green land area of the globe and the two blue markers are just enough to get that done. And besides, I've spent quite a lot of time putting that little box together and getting it colored to look like outer space that I didn't want to spend too much time on the detail of the coloring. I'm ready to get this thing put together by this point. So I'm going to do all of the Copic coloring and get that all die cut. And I like to use my Gemini Junior die cut machine. So in order to get the die cuts to stay in place, if you have a, a die cut machine, then you may notice that sometimes the images, once you put them down on the cutting area, that they like to move around a little bit. And these, these dies are really great. They cut nice and close to the image, but not too close. But back to the point, <laughs> I like to use a piece of tape in order to hold them all down together. There's many different kinds of tape that you can use, and Honeybee carries a lot of tape in their store. I tend to like purple tape because it can be reused several different times on all of the die cuts. Here's a rocket ship and it is just so cute. So I thought I would go with some really neutral colors on the rocket ship since the aliens are kind of the far out colors. <laughs> then the rocket ship brings back and ties in between those grays and blues that are on the card base versus all of the crazy colors that are on the aliens. So I'm using the rocket ship kind of as my grounding space to make a good transition between the card base and the images. And here's this cute little fluffy alien. He is just the cutest. I, I love all of the artwork of honeybee stamps and this is no exception. And it's so fun to sit down and just color something really whimsical and carefree, knowing that there's not really a cotton ball alien out there that I need to try to get the colors to look like they're supposed to look. Instead, I can just make it look like anything I want. 
and my son will still like it. So I'm going to use the same easy color combinations on the realistic looking pieces as well. And that would be like the moon and the stars. When the dies come from Honeybee, you have to snip them apart. So be careful snipping them. And then once they're all die cut, then now we get to finally attach these fun images to the card. Now here's a look at what it looks like to use those extenders. You notice they're attached to the image and to the actual bridge section. My best advice in using these dies, if you want to mail your card, you have to make sure that everything stays in the perimeter of the surprise box. So you see as it is folded down that I can make sure that the images that pop up from the bridge area are going to not be extended past the perimeter of the card base. I'm going to use a really strong adhesive to use to attach the extenders and that's the word that I'm using for those little strips that I'm that are meant to have connected the images down to the card base. Now you don't have to use those extenders. You can use anything that you like. You can use a piece of cardstock. You can use anything, but you can see here that by using those clear extenders to attach the image, we are going to attach them on the back. And you can either do offshoots as well. Like that one alien had a planet sticking out from its side and because I'm using acetate it's clear and it won't really show up. Here's a tip on using the extenders of whatever form that you make them. Make sure that you use a very very good strong adhesive like this double-sided tape and then make sure that your adhesive does not go beyond the extender. Now, my tape is a little bit wider than the extender itself. And so once I take the backing off of the tape, I just kind of roll that tape up a little bit with my fingers and make sure that it all goes underneath that little piece of um, acetate. So let's attach these pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of audition each piece and see uh, where exactly where it can go. And then I'm gonna close the card and make sure that I got it in a place that's going to stay within the card base. So the moon can stick out from the rocket ship. I attached it to the back of the rocket ship and you can't really see that acetate piece because it is, it's clear, but it has to stay within the perimeter of the card base if I want to be able to mail this card or get it into an envelope. So I'm going to do this with each one of those pieces. I'm going to take, um, and in this case right here, I grabbed my tape runner. And it's not as strong as I would like for it to be. I would have, I would have liked to be able to use that double-sided tape or even liquid glue. But because I'm making a video demonstration, then I wanted to be able to get these pieces adhered so that you could see them. And so that's why I used the tape runner. So I'm going to extend the pieces to the left side and the right side, and I'm making a few adjustments as I go. But when the box is open and the flaps are down, then the images are sticking out in different wonky directions. I just have to close it and know that each one of them is going to fit within the perimeter. And it's really easy once you get the concept down. You just put a piece on and audition where it goes and then make sure that it's cool, that it looks any way you want to. Imagine this design, but with flowers where there are little honeybees sticking out. I'm going to have to try the honeybee one to see what it looks like to have tiny little bees buzzing around and sticking wonky in every direction. So this alien, uh, the pink one, I'm going to adhere down to the back part. I want him to be way, way in the back. And then I'm going to attach one of the other pieces, and this is the planet. I'm going to attach it to the back of him. This is the piece we saw um, earlier in the video where I showed an example of how to 
how to have it kind of as an offshoot. So the planet is attached to the back of the alien's body. As you can see, it's really, really cool. And just having it here floating in space, it looks fun. It, it's, it's something I can't do with a regular card. And it's just something I have a lot of fun creating. So now everything is put together in place. I'm going to do some final decorating. And I decided that I wanted to give a little bit of shimmer. This step should have been done earlier before I attached my images, but I didn't think about it. And so as an afterthought, I'm using the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen just to add some sparkle to the images. And now I'm going to add some sequins. And again, this can be done earlier in the project before you attach them to the flaps if you like. I would suggest really planning out what you want your finished product to look like. Now I'm using my anti-static powder tool and I'm just rubbing it along where the connection is between the extender and the back where the adhesive is in case any got out of behind the acetate. That's an easy way to just take the sticky part away from the adhesive and it won't be sticky anymore. A white gel pen is going to put the eyes back on the little eyeballs of the alien and create a few highlight marks on some of the different images. And I also attached a few rhinestones to the images too, just to get a little bit more sparkle. And now I'm going to add a few dots to the stamped images and that's going to just bring a little bit more depth and attention to those items. It's the little details like this that we put ourselves into when we make a card for somebody and I think they do appreciate it. And you can see here that it closes up perfectly and then I'll show you what it looks like in comparison to a standard A2 envelope. Thank you so much for sticking with me today and I hope you enjoyed this. If you would, then share your projects on social media and tag Honeybee. We love to see what you create. Thanks for being our guest today and we'll see you soon.